Hi everyone, it's Sarah from Nova Scotia. I got something special for you today. I'm going to be going through a few different basic techniques that should be easy for any beginner to master. Um, I'm going to use the same six colors throughout and I'll show you those um, in a second. Um, I'm going to do each technique with the same colors and then you can easily see the difference in the final effect with each technique. And at the same time, I'm going to do one with silicone and one without so you can see the cells with silicone versus without and kind of decide what you want. Personally, I don't like to use silicone because you have to clean it off in the end. And if you're doing a really small painting, it's not a big deal. But a big one is, it's a big job. You gotta make sure you get that off there before you put any clear coat on it. But it makes it really pretty. Some really, really pretty stuff can come up with the cells. So these are the colors I'm gonna be using today. Um, we have monastrol green, magenta, a medium yellow, purple, titanium white, orange, and deep cyan. Um, these are all by Montmartre. I really like this brand because it's affordable. I get it off Amazon. It's reasonably thick. It's pretty good pigmented and all that. And um, that's what I use. So I mix all my paints with uh, one part Elmer's glue to one part paint. And then in this batch, I'm going to be using one part Floetrol and then a half part Liquidex Pour Medium. That's this. I just add a little bit of this one because it helps. It adds a high gloss finish. It helps with cracking. It makes your colors dry more crisp and clear with nice clean edges. So for mixing, I don't like to measure. So I like to use in the same size cup every time. So I usually use a red solo cup and I have measured out with water. I got this little these little two ounce shot glasses from the dollar store. So I measured out water into a cup. And so if you can see the line, there's four ounces just below those lines there and then four ounces above it. So because it's really hard to measure a glue and paint in another container because you have to wash it each time because it's so thick. So what I do is pour my glue in first up to about here and then my paint on top of it. And then I can measure out my Floetrol and Liquidex pour medium. So I'm gonna go through and mix some paint to show you how I do it. And then I'm gonna show you a few techniques that should be really easy. And these techniques don't require any special equipment or spinners or anything that's gonna make a whole bunch of mess. So at a beginner level, you can easily do these. So I have measured out already, like I showed you the lines. So I'm just gonna pour my glue all in because that's super thick. So I pour it in, kind of eyeball it to about that mark. And then the paint. I guess I don't have the top off this one. See, it's pretty thick. So about there. And then I find it much easier to measure out the other ingredients because they're so liquid. So I have the Floetrol. Always give it a shake. And Floetrol always has chunks. It's it's actually terrible that way and you don't want to be pulling chunks out of your painting and ruining it. So I took I take a, a, a piece of an old pair of pantyhose and I lay it across the top. Hold it there and then I'm going to hold another cup. Then I pour it, strain it into a cup and then I measure from there. I usually fill it up because I'm mixing up a whole bunch of paints at a time, but I'm just going to do a little bit there it's just to show you. And you can leave the pantyhose right on top there and the top will screw back on then you won't lose it. Okay, so I'm doing one part this, one part the flow draw. So I'm using, which means like, so I use four ounces of paint so that counts as one part. So we're going to use everything based off that. So we're going to need two of these because they're two ounces. You can measure two and then I just use half part so we're going to use one of these of the Liquidex pour medium. I already have this poured out into a cup here because the bucket is huge and very expensive. This is over a hundred dollars so if I spilled that I would be really upset. So I pour it out into another cup to make it easier 
and then I can just measure out the amount that I need. Now, I recommend mixing this up before adding water. If you're using paints that are um, cheaper, they're usually thinner and you might not need any water with this. So we'll mix this up good. Make sure you scrape it all off the sides and bottom. Get a nice even stirring. Now that is way too thick. I want that to not create a mound when I when it falls off the stick. So I'm, I'm going to add small amounts of water at a time. You'll get used to how much water you need for the kind of paint you're using. I just get these popsicle sticks from the dollar store. All these cups are from there. It's pretty cheap. I will say though, when you get, if you want to use glue wall or glue, get the regular kind. Don't buy school glue. School glue is terrible. Your painting will be beautiful when you first do it, and when you look at it the next day, it'll be completely destroyed. So now that's still thick for what I want, so I'll just keep adding a little water. If you end up getting it too thin, you can always add a little bit of paint. And you can always mix your paints the day before too. So if you're doing a big painting and you're mixing up a lot of paint, it's a lot of work to mix all the paint and do the painting in one day if you don't have time. So what you can do is just take another one of these cups and sit it on top. These, these sticks here are actually too big to stay in, but some of them are small enough. So you just sit the other cup on top. And I, these are fun. That's fine for days. Could be even weeks, depending on how hot your area is. And then if it's a little thick, when you come back to it, just add a couple drops of water, stir it up. As long as there's no crust on top, you're okay. It's the crust there. You should just chuck it and get new. So I'm going to keep adding water. Every technique needs a different thickness of paint, but you'll get used to what you like. We're almost there. Another way you can test it is if uh, you can put a, a drop on a, a piece of paper and Tilt the paper and see how fast it pours. I mean, obviously you want to have all your paints next to each other, a drop of all your paints next to each other on the paper so you can compare. I think that's pretty good. So the canvases I'm going to be using today are 12 by 12. And I've chosen this size because they easily fit on the screen and they don't take a whole bunch of time to do because I don't want to bore you. I just want to show you the techniques and show you how things differ. Um, so any, any poor painting, you need to have it elevated when you leave it so the paint is free to run off the sides or else it's going to glue itself to whatever surface it's on. These are small, so all I've done was I put some thumbtacks, I put four thumbtacks, and that will hold it up off the, the table a bit. Make sure they're in the whole way because it does need to be level. If it's not level, your painting will keep running and it'll change completely overnight and probably be ruined. Um, for a big painting, uh, I can use, you can use cups, um, it doesn't matter if what size, but if you are using cups, you want to make sure they're on the frame and not pushing on the canvas itself because it will push up and make ridges. If it's on the frame, make sure it's slightly inside the edge, right, so that the paint is still free to run off. You can thumbtack these on, you probably would use smaller, smaller ones for this size, you could put your cup there and then thumbtack right through it just make sure it stays just inside the frame like I said so the paint can run off for today I've just put used the thumbtacks and that lifts it up enough to not worry about it okay so for my the ones I want silicone added to I'm gonna put two drops of silicone in each of these or three whatever kind of falls in there And I give them a little stir, not too much. If you stir silicone too much, it will make tiny little cells. Just kind of stir it in there. And 
I like to mix my paints the, the day before because it does well save me time. Plus, it um then a lot of the bubbles can come out. Flow trial makes a lot of bubbles and you don't really want those. They pop up through and they make craters and you don't want that. So if you mix them up the night before and uh, then just add your silicone the next day, you'll be okay. So for most techniques, um, it's a lot easier if you flood the canvas with your base coat first. And this can be any color. And I'm, I'm choosing white for all these. But, uh, and you can also use a cheap white. You don't have to use an expensive one. You can just use a Craft Smart. Any, any brand, any brand will work. So you don't have to add your base coat right at the start. You can pour your your paint on it and then add around it, but it's just, it's a lot easier to do it this way than to have to work around something and, and may possibly drip on it or ruin it somehow. I will say when you're using silicone, always use a base coat. You don't want that silicone to touch your canvas because it will make an oily spot, an oily spot with, with no paint on it. It'll look terrible. I also recommend keeping your base coat nearby because you're probably going to have to add it as you go along. It just helps the paint on top flow over easier and you'll see that. And you also use a torch to pop any bubbles that may have Maybe on there from when you first put your paint. You can get these on Amazon too. I think it was 20 bucks. Okay, so the first one I'm going to do is a puddle pour. Um, basically, it was pretty self explanatory. So, in any order, there's no perfect order to where, how you do your paints. It's just good to line them up so that they contrast with each other. You don't want like two shades of blue that are almost identical. You, you kind of want some contrast there. So the puddle pour, you're just going to pour random puddles of paint. And you pour into them. This is probably the easiest. And if you're worried you won't have enough paint, you can add white in around there. I do recommend putting it in a squeeze bottle so you can be more precise than trying to pour a, um, a cup of paint. I'm just going to add white to a few of these. So we're doing the same thing. But these ones have silicone.
Okay, so then you get enough, you feel like you have enough paint on, you just tilt it and tilt it however you want to go. I'm sure I'll tilt this so that you can see. Just keep going until you're happy with it. All right, isn't that pretty? And same thing with this one. If you see any bubbles popping up on it, just pop them with your torch. So far, not a lot of difference. So let's pop up a little later sometimes. And the heat brings them out too. So I'll leave these sit and we'll look at them all at the end. Okay, the next one is gonna be an open cup. I already have my canvases covered in white and I have my colors laid out here with silicone on one side and non-silicone on the other side. You can put the cup anywhere you want and it could be anything. I have a cookie cutter here, but it could be, you could cut out a piece of a pop bottle or cut the bottom off of a plastic cup, anything at all. Just lay it on and then you layer your colors in. I'm gonna see if I can get a better, a closer angle here. So I'll just pour them in. And for this one, it helps to have your base coat close by. Add a little around there. And you just lift up a little bit and let it out. Keep adding your paints. If your cup is like this where it has some shape to it, you can be fancy and um, give it a little twist each time. And you can also move around. You don't have to stay right in the middle. I'm going to tilt this a little bit because we're getting a lot. It's not moving out. 
You could also do this on a spinner, but I'm doing basic techniques today that we don't need anything special for. When you put stuff on a spinner, it, it does make a lot more mess, so. this corner because it's a little dry here. natural cells coming up here. It's pretty. Now let's try the same thing with cells. Well, I shouldn't say with cells, with silicone. We'll have more cells probably. I'm liking the silicone with this method. And we'll torch it. This is really pretty. The cells look really nice in this. And the heat brings out more. So you just want to torch it before you tilt it because once once you tilt it, it'll start stretching them. See these tawny ones here now, they will should stretch out a bit as I tilt this. I really like that purpley center there. I want to try to keep it. So I'll do my corners and then bring it back towards the center each time. Yeah. Let's compare. So the silicone definitely gave more cells in this one. <laughs> so for the next one, 
step one, I'm going to do a straight pour. So I'm going to layer all my colors in the cup and just pour it out. It's super easy. Okay, so I have my both canvases covered in white. I'm just going to set this here, it's okay. So then you just layer them in however you want. I usually like to do, whenever I'm layering in a cup, I like to do two colors and then white. So like I say, a dark color, then a medium color, and then white. And that gives everything enough brightness. So you can see, like, I do use the purple, then the orange, and the white. And then we'll do... What? Also with this one, you can kind of plan it a bit because the colors that you put in first is what's going to come out last and end up in the middle of the center. Middle of the center, yeah, I said that right. <laughs> the middle of the pour. I just kind of did these randomly. So then I'm just going to pour it. And now if you end up with your middle all messed up, you just take like a popsicle stick and do a little swirl in there. Now if you want your center to stay circle like that, you kind of just tilt slowly. And what I like to do is when you hit your edge, bring your center back to the middle and then go in another direction. But if it doesn't stay a circle, it's, it's okay. I don't think I have that paint really. So I'm going to add some white. Just need to add more of that base color and it helps it flow. You can always leave negative space as well. These colors are really pretty. I'm going to stretch it right over the side. Mm. 
Isn't that pretty? Pop the bubbles. And sometimes your corners, just make sure you get your corners. You can always touch them with paint that dripped off the side. Just cover them. All right, I think that looks really nice. Now let's see what it looks like with silicone. I don't remember exactly how I layered them, but I'll try. And I'm still doing two colors and then white. That should be enough. Okay, here we go. You can see the cells popping up already. Okay. You can see there's a lot more cells popping up on this one. I seem to have dripped a little bit of white on there somehow, so I'm just going to tilt that off. cells are really pretty okay so the next one is a variation of a dirty pour um, same thing I flooded both canvases with white and we're gonna layer the um, paints in a cup but instead of pouring straight out we're gonna just do it in rows and that's gonna look really nice So now you can just pour from here, or I'm going to mix this slightly. Don't mix it too much. Just take a stick, something, and just make an X. That's it. Just helps to mix them up a little bit. Now we're going to go rows. I'm going to start in the middle. Do a little swiggly if you want.
you can kind of watch what's coming out what colors are coming out so you can plan to to kind of have it even equally spread them out You don't want to do too much tilting back and forth if you want to keep keep the direction that you did it in. Just kind of tilt it back and forth a little bit so it's even and the corners are covered. And then if you've really messed up your design, I think this is really nice, but say, say you want to keep them in a straight line, just make sure you come back in that direction and just let it pour and just wait and it'll pull back out straight as long as you have enough paint on there. That turned out super pretty. Just remember to torch. All right, let's do the same thing with the silicone. I'll try to pour with my other hand so you can see better. Try to use your other hand if you or come around to the other side of the table so you don't drip on it like I just did. That'll be okay though. I want some of this yellow to come over here so it's even. See the silicone doing its job. Oh, that's really messing up there. I want to keep these these straight. Try going this way. I think I want to run off this really wide section here. I want that to be more even, so I'm going to tilt it this way and that should run off. Oh, that is so pretty. Something to look out for when you're tilting, watch your opposite end and make sure it's not stretching too far. Because you could end up looking at the, the bottom and then and completely miss what's happening at the top and your painting could be really ruined. Oh, that looks really nice. Wow. Look at the difference. Same color, same technique, one has silicone. Okay, the next one is going to be a flip cup. So I flooded the canvas with a base coat. Just want to make sure that you get your, make sure your corners are covered good. They're the hardest part to, to cover. 
you'll be tilting trying to cover your corners and end up losing half your paint. And you also don't want to have your painting finished and dry and you're like, oh, the corners aren't even done. And you got to go touching them up with a paintbrush and, and just make sure you got your edges too. The, these canvases aren't very thick, so it's, they run over pretty easily, but uh, a wide edge, you just got to make sure you cover it. So we're going to layer all the paint in the cup again. But this time we're just going to flip it upside down. So we'll start with the non-silicone one first. Some people say they put the white in the bottom and I don't like to do that because the white, then it ends up, whatever you put in the bottom ends up on top. And I find that when you do it with the white, it, it just makes everything look too white. It just kind of washes it out. Or you get a bunch of white that stays on top and, blo and uh, blocks everything. So again, two colors and then white. So you can either dump it upside down, which you'd have to with a huge canvas so if you're doing more than one at a time. But since this is small, I'm going to just do it this way, lay the canvas on top, and then flip it over. And then we like to leave this set for about a minute so the paints can sink down to each other and do their thing. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to layer the colors in the other cup with the silicone. Okay, so same thing for this one. Lay the canvas on top and flip it over. Now let's go back to, I'm just gonna put this in the middle, I think. There we go. Now you pull it off, pull it to the side, because you don't want, if you lift this straight up, you're gonna get, end up getting drips laid right on top of your stuff. You pull off slow. And then come back. And you have a lot of paint here. You can use the extra that's in the cup to cover your corners. If you need. And it's nice to leave it sit for maybe a minute before you start tilting too. You can already see the silicone making cells in this. Okay, we start tilting. You go whichever way you want. If you see something you don't like, you're going to want to tilt that off and then... So it's pretty random with a flip cup. You might end up with all one color like this is happening. I like these these layers here, so let's try to get some something happening on this. Great, I just dripped all on top of it. Hmm, you know what? I think I may redo it. Now I can pour right on top of this, and that's something that I'm glad this happened because you can pour it right on top. If you have a lot of paint on there, you can scrape it off, but it's about the same since I dumped all this off. It's about the same as when I put my base coat on there. I'll layer my cups again. Or the cup. 
not every time you pour something it, it works the way you want it or, or you're happy with it at all. It's just paint. Okay, that's it for a second and let's do this one. This one looks like it's going to be really pretty. So now we're going to stretch these cells out. Very pretty. I don't want to lose all this color, so I'm going to cover this corner. I just want to I'll use some of this paint that's run off here just to cover this corner. It'll, it'll help it flow over easier. Just that it goes, and then I'm going to come back because I want to keep some of this color on here end up being all one color again. And I'm watching up here to make sure that doesn't get stretched too thin up here at the top. Which with cheap paints it'll stretch really, it'll stretch too thin really fast. This is interesting. Okay, it's kind of neat, but always different. I like the blue. Have a look at both. So, same colors, same technique. One has silicone and one doesn't. Okay, so the last one I'm going to show you is tree ring pour, but I'm going to tilt it a little different than the traditional way. Um, if you go back to the straight pour when we did and I tilted it all around so that it kind of helps it, it kind of keeps the center there This one is going to be Not like that at all. So It's best to use a couple rings to do this and we're gonna try to make it look like wood Now there's a lot of waste with this one. So if you're sad about paint being dumped off you might not want to do it. So I'm going to do layer the cups, layer two cups. And this one you can get away with your paint being a little thicker. I normally wouldn't use this many colors, I think. I don't think to do, if I wanted to make it look like wood, but for this video, I'm going to try to keep it all the same. So instead of pouring it straight out, we're going to do little circles. And I want to do two of these, so I'm going to do it slightly off-center. I'm used to use doing this on a much bigger canvas. So we'll see. I'll try. Just nice circles. I 
I got a lot of paint I might not need to do to. Now you don't have to worry too much about the middle unless it's really bad. If you did want to fix that, you could just swirl it with a, a little stick or something. So with this, we're not going to do a whole lot of side to side movement. And that's why I like to do two. I think I will still. No, you know what? I'm going to just do this and show you. You can kind of go back and forth a little bit, but it's mostly going to be forward and back. And with this traditional ring pour, you would go all around to try to keep that circle in there. We're going to go straight forward. And now you're going to go, it's a lot dumped off. You're going to right till the middle is almost gone, halfway gone. Right there. And then you come right back the opposite direction. You can go side to side a little bit if you want to cover, if you just have a corner to cover, but for the most part, you want to go straight. So that didn't cover, so we're going to turn it back around. We'll pour it. I'm going to pour another one to show you. I, I would probably do two more, really, so I'd cover both sides, but to just show you, I'm just going to do one. that side a little bit until the middle's almost gone turn it around and let it come back you know what I have the paint why not why don't we do another one then it'll look good and lay another cup. I always end up adding a lot when I do when I'm trying to make something look like wood. Just because you can't do that side to side movement, so it doesn't really cover, and you got to keep end up adding more rings. What you do need to worry about though is just making sure you keep the direction going the same way. So you just got to remember which way you which way you tilted it. <laughs> Now I'm going to try not to drip on this. I'm going to come down to the other side. See, there's that, the middle there. I'm going to show you. If this happens, and you're doing a traditional ring pour where you want to keep the center, just give it a little swirl. And then you can't even tell. So the middle's off. Turn it around. If you're just patient and let it let it pour off, it'll pull your rings out straight that it looks like wood.
get a little bit of cells coming out from the titanium white. That happens with that. I don't normally use white for uh, this type of a painting, but I want to keep them all the same for this video. Alright, next, now let's try it with the silicone. I'm going to make three cups from the start with this one. Because I know I'm going to need it. All right, should be plenty in there now. They're just nice circles. Yes, I'm going to have plenty this time. I don't think I need that much. Okay. Ooh, that's actually heavy with all that paint. <laughs> side to side, get it over the edge, let's go straight down. Alright, so I have never put silicone in this type of painting. It kind of takes away from the wood grain, although the over, it's really pretty, it's really pretty. It just doesn't have a wood grain look to it. But for the video I wanted to compare. Okay, let's have a sneak peek. These, the ones with silicone will probably change a little bit overnight, but I'm going to come back and we're going to have a look again when these are all dry. The only other thing that you should do when they're wet like this is just run your finger or with a piece of paper towel or whatever underneath now these cups need, do need to be in behind there, but you run your finger underneath to get that the drips off, if you can see, because they will dry like that and then you will never get them off. All right, we'll see you in a few days when these are dry. Okay, here we are with everything dry. Let's go through them in the order that we did them. So here's the puddle door. It doesn't look like much difference with the silicone. The open cup. These dried really nice. See there's a lot more cells with the open cup one. This was the straight pour. Just a little more action there. This was the dirty pour in rows. I think it's really pretty done with the silicone with this one. The flip cup. And the wood grain pour.
So it's really pretty with the with the extra cells, but it doesn't look like, look like wood grain. It kind of takes away from it, I think. So there you have it. Six colors, six easy techniques with silicone and without.